Hello, and welcome or welcome back to the Creative Podcast. Thank you to anyone who has stuck around long enough to come back to this podcast. Um, I have been on a very, very, very long break, but I told you guys in the last episode that I would be doing lots of school, lots of internship stuff, and I've definitely come to a creative block So, things have just not been flowing as well for me lately. Also, my iPad has been acting really funny with, like, editing things. Um, not really sure what's going on there, but I do record everything on my iPad for this podcast. And I've recorded a few different episodes and they just did not go through. But enough of babbling, explaining things that you guys don't want to hear about. You want to hear... My topics, my things that I have to say, right? I guess. If you're listening, thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. I mean, obviously you're listening if you're hearing this. Yes, okay. So, I'm going to go into my highs and lows for the past week. Today is only Monday, so I'm going to talk about last week. Last week, I just did some finals, um projects i mostly do projects at my college because the professors frankly don't like making final tests or exams so yeah which is really nice because most people i know final season is like a really terrible time um because there's just so much to study for but for me fortunately not so much finals is a bit of a breeze um i'm pretty good at roping through group projects and things like that but nevertheless I just had a lot of anxiety last week and like the last few weeks it's just been like a lot going on personally you know I'm just trying to roll into my adulthood and start becoming more independent and rely on myself a little bit more for things because I am still living at home but nevertheless I want to eventually be on my own doing my own thing um have my own space so then maybe i can devote more time and have more creative energy and things like that to my hopes and dreams and bucket list items and projects that i want to eventually get going and dedicate more of my life to than what i am so yeah um my high for the week was finals were a breeze my low is lots of anxiety but it's okay we're coping um i'm actually gonna get back into therapy i talked about my whole mental health journey in a different episode if you want to go listen to that but i'm thinking of getting back into therapy things have just been so so rough lately and i just find it personally easier to talk to people that I don't really know about it um hence why I have a podcast hello (laughs) but yeah I think that'll be good for me looking forward to that already have all of that set up so today I wanted to talk about tapping into your potential and I want to start off by talking about how I have not been tapping into my potential. Also, this is inspired by movies. Of course it's inspired by movies. Everything in my entire life is inspired by movies. Right? Right. So, let's get into it. So, today I was watching... Well, I'm not even done watching it. Actually, it's currently still pulled up on my TV. I am watching Julie and Julia... And if you haven't seen that movie, it is by Nora Ephron. I hope I'm saying her name right. I watched one documentary about her and kind of fell in love with her work. She was a queen. She passed away, unfortunately. But she was a queen, a writer, producer, everything that I want to be, essentially. And she lived in New York, and she was a journalist at first. And, well, I don't want to be a journalist, but she's just was a really cool person. Um, 
But basically, it has Meryl Streep and Amy Adams. And it's about Julia Child, this really famous um, chef, I will say. Yeah, she, I think she considered herself a chef. And I'm not sure if it's entirely a true story, but it's very inspiring and it's been very inspiring to me personally because I'm watching as one person, Amy Adams' character, she starts blogging her experience as she tries to teach herself how to cook according to Julia Child's famous cookbook and she tries to cook sorry if I'm spoiling this for anyone by the way she tries to cook everything in the cookbook over 500 recipes in a year and that's only 365 days so that's like multiple recipes in a day most days and she's having a really hard time sometimes but it's showing both her working through that and how Julia Child actually got to publish her book. So long story short is it's a story of trial and error, triumph, you know, that whole thing. And it's kind of gotten me thinking, and I've already been thinking about this, like, how do I tap into my potential? And one other thing that kind of started this whole train of thought for me was earlier when my boyfriend was talking to me and I was just like rambling on about something and I brought up this idea that this restaurant in the mall food court should do this cute little thing and he said like why aren't you doing something more productive (laughs) he literally said that He said, why aren't you doing something more productive? You could literally be like a brand marketer or marketing agent or something. Like do something productive with your life. Do something good. You have good ideas. And that kind of just got me thinking. Like, I I know he's my boyfriend. Of course he's going to think... You know, he has some bias, but he's not the first person to tell me that. That I have good ideas and I have interesting things to say and interesting points of view. Um, But I feel like I just never... I never take the time out to actually showcase any of it, you know? I'm pretty much that kind of person who like if no one asks I'm not gonna go rambling on you know especially if it's not someone I'm generally close to um and if no one solicits the advice I'm just not gonna give it because I feel like most of the time it's just not my place but I don't know like It's just this ongoing battle I feel like I have with myself where I feel like I have these certain standards and expectations that pretty much match what everybody else is doing around me, which kind of sucks. Like if I were to want to pursue something like um, being some kind of like brand marketer or something like that, because I really do love that stuff. I'm really passionate about being super creative and hands-on with brands and brand development and figuring out a brand's like voice and uh, I know some of this is probably like eye-rolling to you guys but if I were to buckle down and try to do that as an individual as an individual person on my own I would not know how to go about it and then I would run to like YouTube or books and then I would start to get this con- concept in my head that I have to do it a certain way in order for it to work. And once I get that in my head, it's kind of like I just stick with it. And I'm trying to figure out how I can 
sway away from doing that and how I can start kind of making my own path with some of these things because I feel like I do have so much untapped potential and there are so many things that I could be doing with my time and with my life and I'm just not doing it because I don't know how to and anytime I want to learn how to I just try and do whatever I think someone else says is best instead of really what I think is best if anyone gets me I hope I hope y'all know what I'm saying because this is this is really hard to like put into words so I just have to figure out how to do things on my own and make them work on my own and not take no for an answer I'm very much so like a people pleaser and I like for people to be happy with what I'm doing and to support me on what I'm doing. And if I don't feel that, then I start to think that it's just not a good idea and maybe I'm not on the right path. I I like to have at least someone from the outside who isn't like a loved one support me and say, hey, this is a good idea. But I'll never know if I don't try I guess I don't know that's just my thing but it's easier for me to tell you guys how you could maybe tap into your potential and maybe start doing more things that you love than for me to actually tell myself that and follow my own advice so let's get into the tips yay Okay, because I didn't want to give you guys terrible advice, I decided to run to Google to see if I can find a decent article and maybe share some tips that might actually help you all. Because I need some tips too, y'all, okay? Um, so I found an article on the Los Angeles Times. I'll probably link it somewhere in the episode description. If not, I'm sorry. It's 13 surefire ways to tap into your creativity or potential in general because I think that this could apply to all of the above. So number one, figure out when you're at your best. I think this is a really um, basic one, but hear me out. I think that we all have a time or a moment or a space in which we're at our best. Maybe it's not when we're at home maybe it's when we're outside maybe it's when we're on the way to work or school or on the bus or in an uber or driving or on our bike or i don't know in the bathroom (laughs) taking a shower figure out where you feel the most yourself where you feel the most powerful and tap into that I feel like I don't do this enough there are moments throughout the day every day that we have to ourselves that's completely for us and where we feel our best and where we think our best and where we're being the best version of ourselves that we can be every day. So I think that we should, first of all, acknowledge that. And second of all, figure out how to make that work for us. Um, I'm scrolling to the second one. Find a reverse mentor. I thought this was really interesting. So they that had the idea that we should be talking to people younger than us more often because, one, they have a different perspective on the world. They have a little bit more of an open mind. And two, usually they know more about what's new than we do. Yes, most of you are probably between the ages of 14 and 25. 
max. But you still have people who are younger than you. And yes, we feel like, you know, we're getting to that old, wise kind of age. But sometimes I talk to my siblings, and sometimes they have interesting things to say. Sometimes they have interesting points of view. Usually they're annoying. But nevertheless, a reverse mentor is a sweet idea. You never know where your next great idea could come from. And it could come from someone much younger than you. Number three, change your routine. I do this all the time. This is one thing that I can definitely keep doing for the rest of my life. I hate to do the same exact thing every day for forever and ever. It just makes me sick. I don't know why. Um, But yeah, changing your routine, whether that's changing the sound of your alarm clock in the morning or uh going to dunkin donuts every day or i don't know that's a terrible idea don't go to dunkin donuts every day you're gonna waste a lot of money that way but i can't tell you how to spend your money maybe you're rich yeah um changing your routine will Allow your mind to not get too used to what's going on. Like going to different cities, going to different places, shopping in different areas, or making new friends, or maybe moving somewhere different is a good way to change your routine. In the article, they mentioned that maybe taking a gap year before college would be a good way to change your routine just to get your head out of the books a little bit and the flow of school. And sometimes I really do wish that I just took a gap year because honestly, I feel like I'm wasting my time. But at the same time, I am getting my college credit, so it's fine. (laughs) But yeah, Taking a gap year, child, if you can take gap year, please do. It will open your mind up to so many other things. And in the article, they were saying, like, once you get into your career, it's really hard to take, like, a gap year. If you don't have any money, it's hard to take a gap year. So, if you have the opportunity to take a gap year, I highly recommend it. I think nine times out of ten, if you really want to go to school in the first place, you're going to go back to school. Like, people say all the time, oh my gosh, if you take a gap year, you're never going to want to go back to school. Like, that's not true. If you want to go back to school, you will go back to school. And in due time, there's no rush. But, yeah. Maybe maybe that's something that you might want to look into. I don't know. Four, battle procrastination epically i'm just gonna skip past that one that one wasn't that great uh try walking especially in nature again a pretty basic one skipping that we get it walking in nature we hear this all the time we've heard it for the past year relax constraints this is a good one um i'm gonna actually read this because it was so good so Someone said, I was working with a spirits company recently, and I said, try to imagine you're a brand new 22-year-old employee in your company. It's 10 years from now, which means you can relax technology constraints, and now imagine the most innovative bar in Los Angeles in the summer of, let's say, 2026. With the distance of time and age, people came up with amazing ideas. It's about getting mental distance from the problem, relaxing constraint. It's not about the individual person anymore, and it's not about the present. When you get people out of their heads, out of their normal thought patterns, it unlocks more creativity. And I think that that's a really good exercise to do, to try to envision, like maybe even for yourself, Try to envision yourself 
in a world that's not like the world that we're currently in. And like she said, there aren't any technology constraints there. So meaning you don't know what technology we're going to have tomorrow or five years from now. Right now, I might be recording on an iPad, but maybe in the future, I'll have more easy accessibility to other technology, and I can do even more with whatever platforms I have then. You know, it's kind of like taking away that thing that we kind of tie ourselves down to. We're like, oh, live in the moment, you know, the present is all we have, blah, 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 but like... I feel like that's a very dying way to think sometimes. Like, ugh, just the present, that's all we have. Like, not thinking forward. I'm a very uh, dreamer type person, if you didn't pick that up already. So, I like envisioning different realities. I like envisioning different versions of myself, different lives that I could have, different things that I can do in this lifetime. And not just only focusing on the present all the time. I mean, like, the present is wonderful, yes. But I do think that it's also healthy, in a way, to put yourself in a place that's beyond right now. Um, And like the article said, it can expand your creativity. So maybe try an exercise like that. Try to envision yourself... Maybe 10 years from now, what are you doing? Where are you living? That kind of thing. Or maybe applying it to something that you love doing, like writing. Try to envision what writing is like 10 years from now. Because writing has changed tremendously in the past 10 years, thanks to social media and the ability for everyone to write and say whatever they want to say all the time. So... Just think about those things. Next one is embrace diverse perspectives. Um, I didn't read into this one too much, but I think it kind of goes hand in hand with the reverse mentorship thing. Look for different people outside of your normal everyday space, Um, which I know is really hard right now, but you have different social media platforms that aren't as toxic as say Instagram no shade to Instagram but shade to Instagram um you have like Reddit Quora I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly how can I be a podcaster and like never know how to pronounce anything anyways yeah you can look to different outlets that are more relaxed I would say and less um hustle culture money monetary based for outside opinions and to interact with different people and learn new things about people I love watching YouTube for that reason I also love watching movies and documentaries because I get to see different sides of people and their lives and in different places so yeah diverse perspectives opens up your mind a lot improve your tolerance for failure I think that this is really important I hate failing and I hate taking too big a risk um which is something that I have to slowly grow out of But sometimes setbacks are better than just staying in one place. It's kind of like if you stay in your hometown for your entire life, how would you ever know what's outside of that? You know, because you're too scared of the risk of leaving your hometown. We hear those types of stories and lessons told all the time in kids' movies. So, we shouldn't be afraid of failure. Next is minimize reactionary workflow, which I find is really interesting 
because I feel like most of everything that we do in America is reactionary. Uh, When we go to the doctor most of the time, it's reactionary. Usually our work days are very reactionary. Like if you work for a service industry, like fast food, let's say. Someone comes up to the window, they order something, and then you have to make their food, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes you have it pre-prepared, but usually it's reactionary. I just feel like everything that we do every single day is so reactionary, and we have to purposefully seek out something that's proactive. So, hmm, what's a good example of this? Maybe instead of me only writing when I'm sad, I should maybe also write when I'm happy or in other times or when I'm just feeling creative, not when I'm like down and I need to get all of my emotions out, but in other times too, just not relying on being so reactionary all the time i'm gonna read a piece from the article to kind of explain a little bit better because i feel like i'm doing a very poor job um someone says i call this the era of of reactionary workflow because we can easily react 100 percent of the time and never make a dent in our long-term goals it's critical that we force ourselves to unplug more often and focus on the long term the list of two, three things we're trying to do for our business and in our lives over time. So, yeah, that's minimizing reactionary workflow. Hopefully, you kind of get what I'm saying there. I feel like I didn't make great sense of that, but that is a very good point. Stop selfie stalking. Uh, This one was titled very badly, but it has a good point. It's just saying that um, we rely on a lot of security nowadays and, you know, we want to see that our social media numbers are doing good most of the time. We want to see that we have a lot of money in our bank account. We want to see that our website is getting enough traffic. We kind of depend on numbers and metrics and all of these things to like drive whatever we do in our day and how we feel for that day and sometimes we kind of like measure ourselves to numbers all the time even if you're not measuring yourself to the likes that you're getting on social media you're measuring yourself to how much money you have in your bank account. If you're not measuring yourself to how much money you have in your bank account, you're measuring yourself to what your GPA is. You know, we all like measure ourselves to numbers and sometimes just breaking that habit of always checking those numbers helps our brain like relax a little bit and we're not always like gasping for air and seeking some kind of security from a number. And I need to stop doing this. I check my bank account every single day. And when I post something on Instagram, I'm finding myself more and more. I come back and I check it to see how the numbers are doing, which is just like, ugh. Like, I used to not do that as much, but now I'm starting to do it again and I need to stop. It's just like, the numbers really don't matter at the end of the day. I mean, yes, it matters how much money you have in your bank account. But if you already have a general consensus of how much money you have and how much income you make, you don't need to check it every single day. You don't need to check it every few hours. You might want to check it after you make a purchase or after you go out for the day just to make sure that, you know, there's no fraud or anything going on. But other than that, we really don't need to be checking these things all the time. Because it's just not healthy. And it puts us in a very like insecure mindset to always be seeking some kind of validation or safety from these numbers. So, yeah, that's all I have to say on that one. 
get influential. So the last one was talking about not taking selfies. And then this one says get influential. And I was very confused. But it's not influential in the way that we're thinking like influencers. No. It's talking about um, running toward influences for getting new ideas. Um, kind of goes hand in hand with like the reverse mentor thing and all of that, what I was saying earlier. But the article suggests to read books, go to museums, which some are not open right now, but some are opening again. So whatever you can go to safely, um, or webinars or watch movies like I always do probably too much um but pretty much always be on the lookout for any kind of influence or inspiration and write it down y'all the amount of things that I write down is probably redonkulous but I have this long 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 list in my phone of ideas that I randomly come up with and that I write down and later on I usually go through them again and organize them into some kind of note or I make a voice memo of them or something just so I can go back to them and they're all like together so I have a YouTube space for ideas or a podcast space for ideas or a general space for ideas. Um, That's usually when I just can't apply it to a certain medium yet when I don't know if I want it to be like a video or an audio or a picture or a movie in the future or a children's book I don't know so always be ready to write things down don't feel silly about it I used to feel a little silly about it like why am I writing this down but you never know when you will need to go back to those good ideas I have a million good ideas that I could probably sell now But I'm not going to right now because I'm scared. Um, Which is not helping me tap into my potential. It's very contradictory to this episode title. Okay, next one is commit to a daily creativity practice no matter how small. I really, really, really want to get into this. Some people have the time to paint every day. Some people only have the time to write a little something every day. Some people take pictures every day whatever your like main squeeze is like whatever you why did I just say main squeeze I'm so sorry y'all I child it's 1130 I'm just I'm just babbling at this point but yeah whatever your main thing is that you really like to do that you feel that you can kind of turn to to relax you should make just a few minutes of time to dedicate to that. Um, I might start off by maybe writing a blurb for five minutes on my phone every day because I'm not very good about sitting down and writing things on a piece of paper. And I definitely don't have the time to paint every single day. Maybe I'll try to do that throughout the summer. Paint or draw, but probably won't happen. But yeah. Dedicating a little bit of time to doing a creative thing every day keeps your mind open, keeps your mind fresh, keeps it working because I know a lot of us are very creative individuals, but many of us don't have jobs or resources or things like that to always um, devote all of our time to it and especially when we're tired and we've had a long day at work or we're having a long day at school or whatever it is. We just don't feel like painting a picture, you know? Everything else in the day is just emotionally draining and we don't have it left in us. But I think it'll be really good if if you and I, you and I, yes, you listening, you and I together could dedicate that time for ourselves because it's very important that we remember to include ourselves in our day even if it's just for five minutes or a few minutes on a car ride or 
while you're waiting for your toast to finish toasting or something. I don't know. A lot of people are very uh, organized about this and they're like, okay, every day before bed, I'm going to journal, but I can't do that because sometimes before bed, I want to watch a movie. Sometimes before bed, I want to eat a snack. Sometimes before bed, I want to talk to my boyfriend. I can't do the same exact thing every single day, but I'm going to try to be more intentional about including the same exact thing in my day whenever I feel like including it, if that makes any sense. So we can do it. I believe in us. What are you going to include in your day? You, you, you tell me. You message me on Instagram at kcreates and you tell me what you're going to do and then we can maybe help each other stick through it and actually do it every single day and hold each other accountable. I think that that would actually be really freaking fun. Like maybe, maybe I could podcast every day for like five minutes, just a quick blurb. Ooh, that sounds really fun. Or maybe like a video a day on my stories. Oh, side note. I'm thinking of getting rid of the podcast Instagram only because it's just too much for me to try to focus on so many Instagram pages at once. I feel like my mind is going to explode. Um, I'm just not very good about planning out a feed, making everything look good, making everything be super cohesive but interesting at the same time. So I think I'm just going to put everything on my main account at K Creates. And all of my interactions will be there. And if people don't want to see it, then people don't want to see it. And they're going to unfollow. It's fine. But, yeah. It's just a lot for me to try to take care of that on a totally separate page. And create content around that. I just feel like I really don't have ideas for things that I could post on the podcast page anyway. And I don't really want to do it anymore. Sorry for that side note. Um... I'm hoping to get tested for ADHD because I think I got it, y'all. I really am terrible at focusing sometimes. Um, And I'm only saying that because ADHD is in my family and who knows, I might have it. And I might have had it for a long time and just never knew. Anyway, moving on. Um, Last but not least, show your work. I love this one. Don't wait until you have a perfect finished product to finish your ideas out into the world. Um, Yes, show your work. And Julia and Julia, I'm going to go back to that movie. Amy Adams' character, she sat on the couch with her husband and she was like, I want to learn how to cook, but I'm not a real cook. And then her husband was like, I don't know, read a cookbook. And she was like, yeah okay she's like but I want to be a writer he's like okay then be a writer and she's like but I'm not like a real writer because she has this job that she doesn't like and everything and he's like well then just write a blog you don't have to be like this super official person to have an interesting point to have something to say to have a voice, to use that voice, to share your experiences with the world, to be interesting, to be insightful, to be inspiring to someone. You don't have to be really special, you know? And I think that we know that a whole lot more now. I mean, <laughs> so, some of these people that blow up on social media, it just, it baffles me sometimes. But you see how some of them use whatever publicity they have and they hang on to it and sometimes they make good of it and they start using their voice really positively, you know? And you're like, wow, I have no idea why they're famous, but I'm kind of glad they are. It's that kind of thing. It's like everyone is just a human being at the end of the day. Even someone with a million followers on Instagram is a human being. Even someone with a million dollars in their bank account is a human being. So at the end of the day, we all have the right and we all have the privilege in this lovely country 
that I reside in called the United States of America to voice our opinions, to share our stories, to share our history, to share what we love, to share everything that we cherish and hold dear. And of course, always at our own risk, but we do have that liberty. So I think it's important to recognize that every day and to try to exercise that. I know sometimes it doesn't feel like we have those rights, but we do. And sure, people can try to take them away from us, but nevertheless, we have those rights. So show your work. Share what you love to do with other people. Even if it's just a couple of other people, share it. It'll make you feel good. It really will. You might not feel like it will. You might be like, "Eh, I'm a little shy about it. I don't know. What if they hate it? What if they trash me? If they trash you, then forget them, okay? Somebody else will love it. I will love it. If you're shy about sharing what you love, share it with me. I will appreciate the heck out of that because you love it. And that's what's most important, not being the super perfectionist person about it or being the best person in the world at it because really all of those standards are fake nobody's the best at anything we have these made up numbers and letters and languages and things that say oh this person's the best but are they really no they're just the most recognized by people so Being more recognized does not make you technically the best. There is no best. There's just whatever version of yourself and of your work makes you feel good about yourself. That's all that you should really go off of. Because nobody else will be able to make you feel good about yourself besides for yourself so oh my gosh i hope some of that made sense my goodness that was a really long long rant okay so the challenge for you is to number one try to find something that you can do every day to tap in your into your potential doesn't have to be a creative potential thing like writing or painting or drawing or whatever but it can be something very very tiny like maybe reading a inspirational quote which is really corny but hey it might work for some people or um scribbling on a piece of paper for like five minutes straight with some crayons you know straight up get out the Crayola oh my gosh I said Crayola oh my gosh why am I speaking like this it's 12 o'clock that's why uh get out the Crayola crayons get a blank sheet of paper scribble on that or play a fun game That makes you think outside of the box. I know I don't play games in my everyday life. So if you don't play games either, maybe play a game or do a word cross puzzle. Wow, I just sound like I'm recommending things that older people should do. But hey, maybe we should start doing them too, you know? Um, Yeah, find one thing that you can do every day that you feel will help you tap into your potential. And if you try something and you don't like it or it's not working for you, change it. Like literally no one is telling you that you have to do the same thing every day because I usually can't do the same thing every day or I will lose my mind. I will, y'all know, I already said that in this episode. But yeah, try to find one thing that you can do every day. And two, try to start sharing your work. You don't have to do the typical thing like 
make a full Instagram page for it because I've been down this road so many times making so many Instagram pages for things that I like. That's sometimes a really big commitment that you really don't need to put on yourself. Like that's one of those constraints that we have. Sometimes we feel like the only way to share our work is on social media. Maybe that's not the best way for you. Maybe there are things locally around you where you can share your work. Like your school newspaper if you're in high school or college. Or your local newspaper. Or your local museum if they're open right now. Or some kind of showcase around you that's surrounded with art. Um, I know that I have a lot of those in my area in South Florida. Like we have showcases and stuff like that. Or do a webinar or start a YouTube channel if you want to. Again, nothing with super harsh constraints and commitments because that makes it harder to tap into your potential sometimes. It makes it feel like a stressor more than a stress relief. So anything that you can find to showcase whatever you're doing or even if you just like send it to a friend send it to your group chat you know it'll help you start to kind of get out of that box where you feel like it's just you yourself and I and whatever it is that you love doing and maybe someone else can start enjoying it with you or maybe you can find a community of people who also enjoy the same thing and make new friends bond off of that and maybe that will enrich your love for whatever it is that you love to do even more who knows um so yeah those are your two things those are your two assignments from professor kayla i need the homework in by 11 59 no i'm kidding it's not an assignment but if you want to share with me i would love i would love if y'all would share whatever you're doing daily with me or whatever you'd like to showcase with me shoot we can do a whole talent show okay i love y'all y'all are real ones for even taking the time to listen to me because i don't know if i would take the time to listen to me so i really appreciate that so i would like to appreciate what you can do as well because we all have special little talents and things so yeah um that is your assignment i keep saying assignment it's not an assignment but you know just think about it okay thank you for listening hopefully i'll be back next week tomorrow I did say that I'm only going to be doing these once a month, but I don't know. I might be changing that to more frequent because I like talking to you guys and sharing things with you all. Um, I hope that you have a beautiful rest of your day, night, morning, week, month, life. If you never come back, if you listen to this once and you just never come back because I do that sometimes. And I love you. Be safe. Have fun. Relax. Breathe. I know it's hard. We be forgetting to do that. Sometimes we be holding our breath and we don't even remember to breathe. But breathe. Uh, I'm thinking of talking about my dreams in the next episode. I have a lot of weird dreams. Not like goals dreams, but like my actual sleeping. Um... If y'all are interested in hearing about that, let me know. You know, DM me. Please DM me. I am such a nice person. Um, I'm not very good at texting back, but if you leave me a voice memo, oh, I I got you. I will be voice memoing you back, okay? I'm like that. I don't know why. I can't respond to a text, but a voice memo, yes. Um, Probably because voice memos are like more of an instant in the moment thing. Anyways, I'm not going to drag on anymore. Bye! Indeed, I lost my train of thought, and I did not mix things up. But I just wanted to throw in here. Um, Next episode, I want to do some kind of Q&A advice session. Definitely copy and paste Emma Jamerlin. Um, but yeah, I feel like that would be a little more fun, interactive. So, if you want to participate... I will be putting up 
a little response bubble on my Instagram at kcreates. Um, spelled the same way as creative, just with an eight, you know? And I'll be putting that up on my story probably just like in general and probably leave it as a highlight. I don't know if you can still respond if it's a highlight, but yeah, sometime before the next episode, I want to put that up so then you guys can throw in some questions in there and I can respond or like do like an advice section of the podcast. I don't know yet. I'm trying to figure this thing out still. So yeah, stay tuned for that.